Very good afternoon to everybody that's joining us. Um, it is Monday afternoon, and um, it's almost the end of the month. Uh, we're literally getting there. And joining me this afternoon, it is Kobe Portita. Very welcome to you, Kobe. Hi, Neil. So wonderful to be joining you this afternoon. Um, so, Kobe, we're going to start shortly. For those that's joining us at the moment, now we can see there's quite a few years joining. You need to comment in the comment box and tell us where you're from. Which city is it from? Is it Johannesburg, Port Elizabeth, Cape Town, Durban? Um, we know it's cold all over. It's very cold up here in Johannesburg. Um, I see tomorrow morning's temperature for the minimum is one. So it's going to be a very cold one this morning. It was six. So please do comment in the comment box. Tell us where you're from. I'm Neil Barker, and I'll be talking to Kobe today with regards to how COVID-19 has affected the property market and so forth. You'll be able to ask you any question with regards to that. Even if you want to sell your property, you'll be able to get that lead on to Kobe straight here, and she'll be able to do a valuation for you and uh, yeah. that too. So we're going to have all of this interesting topic, uh, in, interesting questions this afternoon in terms of it. So please do comment in the comment box. Tell us where you're from. All you have to say, Port Elizabeth, Johannesburg, Durban, Cape Town. I'd like to get a few um, of, uh, of those in this afternoon. So it could be quite interesting times in terms of what's happening during COVID-19. And, um, you know, I think a lot of companies are adjusting and so forth. But before we start, tell us, like, how did you get into the property market? Um, Neil, that was uh, 20 years ago. Um, and uh, I was a teacher um, for 10 years, a grade two junior primary teacher. And um, yes, I think I always had an entrepreneurial um, spirit because while I was a teacher, I also ran a grooming school. Um, mm. So on, on Mondays to Fridays, I was a teacher. And then on a Saturday from nine o'clock to five o'clock, I had 200 students in my grooming school. And I had six international models, and um, I was the biggest um, uh, modeling. I did the biggest modeling agency in Port Elizabeth um, at that stage. So yes, it, um, and so my husband, the one day, said to me, "Kubi, you know that you're making more money on a Saturday than what you're making from a Monday to Friday teaching." Yeah. And um, then you know you you're working, you're always in a motion of doing your thing, and you actually never sit back and look at your business and see. You know where your income stream is coming from so i realized that from us you know on a saturday for the the hours that i spend i actually am much more successful with my income and being a teacher and i've got a lot of respect for teachers because mm. you work you mark your books until 11 o'clock at night so um yes so i just my husband said to me i think you should go into an industry where you can have one thing that you focus on yes. and i him, he said, I said, but what? And he said to me, uh, I think real estate. And I said to him, no, I'll never be able to sell a house. No. And uh, and that was the beginning of the end. I did my, my estate agency course uh, in the December. And um, I basically started with an independent company. Um, and I was the end of November, December, January, I sold enough. Um, property to make up my whole salary for um, my year as a as wow. a teacher. So I had a very good start um, to the industry, and and then uh, I said to my husband because I said to him, you know what? If I start over this, the December holidays and I don't make it, at least yes. I can go back to teaching. Yes. You know, so I didn't resign. I waited because <laughs> I, you know, we don't know. You know, it's an unknown. And um, I started and I absolutely loved it. I love people. And um, I think the, the real estate is almost like secondary. Mm -hmm. So if you love people and you, and you care about people um, and you want to serve people, I think you will be good at, at, at this. So mm -hmm. January, when I went back, I resigned. And uh, that was uh, me starting my real estate career. Oh, wow. So selling enough in your like that one month ready to to cover salaries for the whole year. Um, next, I also obviously want to speak to you about like how many uh, like how, we know you've been in property now for twenty years, but how many agents you have, how many agencies, and so forth. Before we get to that, let's just say hello to a few people. Erica joining us from Jeffrey's Bay, um, Belinda saying hello, watching from Four Ways. Um, Yolanda also joining. She is saying she's watching from Craddock. Warren saying hello. Um, 
to Kobe and Neil. Um, and Christine saying good afternoon um, to you all as well. So please do comment in the comment box. Any questions for Kobe, um, whether it's property related um, uh, or anything that we're talking about today, you're more than welcome to ask a question in the comment box or even just add your thoughts. What do you think? Um, and so forth. Um, also, um, well, I see there's a few coming in here. Lauren saying, hey, Kobe. Uh, Rochelle also saying, hey, Kobe and Neil uh, as well. So it could be 20 years in the business. So how many agencies, do, like offices, do you have now and how many um, agents? Um, well, currently I've got two um, offices, uh, two franchises, one in Warmer, one in Lorraine. Yeah. Um, together we have about 70 agents um, with about 20 admin staff. So staff complement of about 90 people. We've been oh. the biggest, the biggest uh, agency or franchise in the Eastern Cape. And also proud to say I've got the most amazing agents and staff. And that is the reason for, for my success is because I'm surrounding myself with the most amazing, powerful, fantastic mm -hmm. business people. Um, and that is the secret of anybody being good at, at, at what they do is to have the right people with you. Yeah, surround yourself with people that will help you make a success of it. And obviously, we're talking Remax Independent um, in, in Nelson Mandela Bay. Um, like Kobe mentioned, there's the Lorraine office, there's the Warmer office. It's those two, eh, Kobe? Yeah. Yes. Um, done really well, and obviously looking after the whole of Port Elizabeth uh, from there. So a lot of people people have been asking, Kobe, um, how is COVID-19 affecting the property market? Um, and, you know, should I sell, should I not sell specifically? What do you think in terms of, COVID-19, how has it affected you and your business um, and how did you adapt? Yeah, I think we've never ever experienced what we've actually had to um, uh, experience now. Um, we couldn't work um, mm -hmm. effectively, so we had to do everything that we did virtually. We had to list virtually, we had to show virtually, we had to do our office uh, virtually. Um, basically, they've cut us off by the knees and we could do nothing. So yes. we had to very quickly become very innovative um, and we had to to really think out the box. Um, and uh, it was very challenging, but even though, um, you know, we, we couldn't show houses and we couldn't list houses, I must say we were extremely successful. Um, and I think, I mean, my one team has made 18 sales, we've done nine sales. Um, uh, uh, the other team is close on 20 as well. So, I mean, we we are signing the contracts. A lot of the more expensive properties uh, were signed subject to final viewing. And mm -hmm. um, last night we heard from Cyril now that we are going to be able to start working on the 1st of June. We, we take it that we can because we were not in the exclusion list. So very excited about that and really relieved because and now we can get into the houses. You can't really get the, you know, you can't really effectively value a house if you're not in the house. So although we asked the sellers to do video tours through the house and we were walking through the houses with video um, calls, um, it was challenging for us. So now we can actually go to the properties, the clients, the new listings that we've, um, um, and the new properties that we've listed, um, that we, um, we asked the clients to do the photographs because we also are not allowed to send our professional photographers into the houses. So yeah. it's really, really been extremely challenging. But one thing, Neil, I want to to really urge, I think the, the most important thing that a lot of businesses learned from this whole ordeal is that you have to have three months um, overheads in a reserve account mm. because is now the reason why a lot of companies are actually going to close their doors so you cannot spend all the money at the end of the day and being in real estate you actually are running your own business within the business yes. you are responsible for your own marketing for your own finances for your own planning for your own future and if you're going to be spending all the money that you make every month and you're not going to put money aside for times like the COVID then you are not going to be sustainable so I think um, it's it's really really sad that people did not have uh, or exercise good business principles 
um, to be um, able to withstand what's what's happening now. So I'm just grateful that you know um, I've got very good financial um, um, leadership in my office with the job and bank. That's really phenomenal, and we we were prepared. So I'm really, really, really very grateful that that we have got um, our reserves sorted. We can pay our salaries and. And I think for the whole office, just to know that we are safe, you know, the people that are there can operate and we're there to support them. Also yes. with COVID now, we, we couldn't, um, because we couldn't go to the office, we had a lot of Zoom trainings. Um, and um, I love training being a teacher. That's in my passion. It's in your blood. Once you're a teacher, you're always a teacher. I'm forever yeah. one. You teach everybody everything, um, which was wonderful because I could share my knowledge now more effectively and you save in driving time. And I think business as a whole in South Africa is going to change completely. Mm -hmm. Going forward, um, I, I think we're going to uh, we're going to plan much different to what we planned prior to COVID. Yes, people have adapted, and it's nice to see how you've adapted. Where you couldn't get professional photographers in, but you still spoke to your clients, and they came up uh, specifically made a plan um, with regards to to that. So, if you have a look at the look at the property forecaster, um, will be you know a buyer's market, seller's market. Um, you know, what are we looking at specifically now? I always say when people ask me. Should I buy a house? Shouldn't I buy a house? You should always buy a house because um, everybody should have a place to stay in. And that is why, you know, our industry is not an industry that's um, a, a nice to have. It's not like a Louis Vuitton handbag or or anything like that. It's something you need at home. So for real estate agents, I always say to them, look, the houses are going to sell. The question is, are you going to be the one doing the sale? Yes. Because if you could buy, your affordability is going to change. Mm -hmm. If you could buy for 2 million, maybe now you're going to buy for 1.5. If you could buy for 1.5, now you maybe will only be able to buy for 1 million. But everybody needs a home. Yes. Um, so I, I say we need to be positive. We need to give our service. We need to be there to serve our, our clients, our community with advice. There's so much advice that we can share with them and and we're really the experts in the industry. So it's so wonderful for us to be able to share what we do, um, our investors um, training um, that we, we, we give, um, starting your investment portfolio. Now is the best time ever. Everybody needs to be speaking to us to start the investment portfolio. So, so yes, there's definitely a market you need to buy. So, um, and, and Belinda's also asking, uh, could we, uh, would you say it's more buyers or sellers market? Um, I would say it all the, depends on where the need is. The demand will will determine. In the lower mm -hmm. price bracket, we're still getting multiple offers. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, some of the houses that that um, I've sold during lockdown, we've had three offers on the one house wow. because it's an affordable bracket and at first the people said they want to sign subject to final viewing and then when the other offers were coming in the people just said no i don't want to sign subject to anything i want to secure this house i'm buying it without seeing it i'm happy with the photographs luckily we could do the photographs prior to lockdown so we had our beautiful professional um uh, photographs with our virtual tour through the house so the client could really get a very very good idea and then what we did um to 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 just to to finalize the the sale we we do a walkthrough with a seller on video uh, a whatsapp call so you you've got your four blocks yeah. so we've got the buyer the seller and and then the agent and then the, the seller will walk in front. And I think sometimes just to get that feel when you walk and we start outside the property, we walk, we do the 180 degree for the for street view. Then you walk in 180 degree. And so we walk through the house. And that is how we actually now sold the house. That's a so, great idea for me. Yeah. So we, we really had to think. How are we going to get the people to do that final commitment? And although the photographs were fantastic, the people still wanted that one final walk through through the house to get that feel. And and I must say, the sellers really assisted us so wonderfully. Um, you know, through this whole process, and oh, wow. that is why we could sell it. Yes. For those, 
for those of us joining us and talking to Kobe Portita, she is probably like most of the well-known people in terms of property. 20 years experience. She's got the biggest agency in Nelson Mandela Bay. And they've really taken property to a, another level with her team that she's got. And like she said, she does things with her team. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a, a team of excellence, basically. We, we can, she's going to be open up for questions in a few minutes. So please do pop in your questions in the comment box. I also ask all of those that's joining us at the moment. I can see there's quite a few. Uh, please do share the video. So you only have to click on share um, and then share the video so more people can obviously interact and obviously also uh, like the video so that it gets a bit more traction while, while Kobe is live with us at the moment. So she just open up for your questions or thoughts. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have a question for Kobe? All in the comment box specifically. Before we go to the next question, don't forget this coming Wednesday, we've got Michelle on from BZLR Attorneys in uh, Pretoria. And she's going to be talking about how COVID-19 has basically uh, affected you as well. And then next week, Wednesday, don't forget from June, we're only doing these Oracle Media in Conversation sessions every Wednesday only. We won't have it on Mondays or Fridays. We're taking it down to Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. And we're starting off June with Ida Fenter that will be joining us right here on the 3rd of June. Um, wow. Live conversation Q&A with Ida Fenter, uh, which is also quite well known. So could we, obviously, we, we're talking property. How, how will the prices be affected? Because I've heard from people, look, all of their houses are going to be so cheap now. Commercial properties are going to be affected. What do you think? Look, I, I think, again, all prices are determined by demand and supply. Mm. I do think that price uh, property prices over two million um, is going to be affected. Um, not and all depends on also what the property offers because if you've got a good property and this is what i want to urge um, the people that want to sell their properties is make sure your property is appealing make sure it's crisp make sure you've just painted before you put it on the market um the garden is perfect just do a little bit with your staging because those properties on demand when you've got a good property it doesn't matter what the price is i'm busy now negotiating on a 13 million rand property that wow. i'm doing now in in lockdown so um if your property is a good quality property you will sell it the 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 thing that the people must understand is that it's not whether the price is correct it's just that the number of people that can afford that property is fewer the mm -hmm. fewer the People that can afford it the longer it's going to stay on the market but you will get the person if your house is a is a good um, um house and it offers and the flow is good um and it's in a good position you will get your price but then you must ask yourself am i willing to wait now this is where the question comes in is yes. whether you have got the time to wait um. and only if you are forced to sell will you then have to compromise and you have to maybe accept a lesser amount than what the property is really worth but mm -hmm. i mean i'm working on this 13 million rand deal the clients are really impressed we need to now wait for lockdown obviously to be over because you don't buy a 13 million rand property without really viewing it you need to definitely go and view it but the bottom line is that your you must just understand it's about demand and supply mm -hmm. and you must not be in a hurry that's why i always say if you've got a property that's worth four three four five six seven eight million mm. and you are thinking of selling it's always good to speak to your um agent that um you've got a relationship with in this industry everything is about relationships you need to feel safe you need to feel that person is going to have your interest at heart so i've got a lot of my friends that say to me Kirby, you know what if i get my price I always say to them, what what would you accept? Because I give them the value. And mm. then I say, if I get the cash offer tomorrow, what will be the price that you will accept? Then in the back of my mind, I know. And every single house is always on the market for the right price. Yes. So, so especially the very expensive houses. Don't if you want to move next month, put your house on the market today for three million and over. You need to give yourself enough time to sell the very expensive houses because it's not the value of the house that's going down, it's your time that's becoming less. Yes. And because you don't have time, you're going to compromise in price. 
So for people that's in financial trouble, so I always say debt, divorce, death, departure. If one of those four things is in the equation for you to decide, okay, I have to now so I'm getting divorced. There is where the compromise and price is going to be very, very um, evident because yeah. the people have to, the time has now made the person having to sell. But um, in the lower price brackets, I don't foresee that we're going to change our prices in Port Elizabeth. I'm speaking Port Elizabeth. Because remember, okay. all the metros are different. Not yes. two metros are the same. And we've actually been lagging behind the other metros because they had massive increases in growth in, in the property prices where we haven't. Our prices are still very much on um, the lower side. So yeah. I foresee that our prices are going to stay intact um, below 1.8 million rand. We've got a very high demand. So I don't foresee us really having to compromise in, in, in price no. at all. Um, I think going over 1.82 million, over three, four, five, six, seven, up to 13 years, then you, you will probably, if you have to sell, you're going to have to compromise. And query also looking at when you see a property, should you wait? Um, and not buy it. You know, I know um, you've experienced yourself. Um, if you wait, someone else to buy it, then you, then you like have to buy them for at a more expensive price than that from, from them specifically. So, what what's your advice? If you see a property and you like it, should you go and think about it? And like, if you have to go and think about it, how long? But then you also have the risk of someone else buying it and losing out on on the deal. Well, I always say, you know what, I, I've had people on uh, that come to my show houses and mm -hmm. um, being in the industry for 20 years, you have some people that just come and visit you at your show houses because you become friends with the people in the community. And yeah. then uh, well, you have people that come and they visit you at your show house and they love the house. And then they come two years later, three years later, they still go and go around to the show house. And they said, you know, it could be that house that you had that time. That's the one I should have bought. I said, you, yes. And the other one you should have bought was that one that you didn't. Yes. So I always say, if the house speaks to you, the price is right, don't put it off. Because mm. a good property doesn't come around every day. And if you tick the boxes, I'm very much a boxy person. If you tick the boxes, and it's it offers what you want. It's it the the elevation is right. It faces north. If you want a nice warm home, if it's in a good position, a good area, um, I would say Neil sign for it and take it. Um, uh, there's of course a very big difference between buying an investment property and buying a private primary residence. Yes. Your primary residence is where you can get that feeling in your stomach. That's where you want to raise your family and you want to stay there for ten. 10 years, maybe 15, 20, like I'm in my house for 23 years. Yeah. And I, I don't want to ever sell it. I love my house, my home. But if you buy an investment property, it's totally just a cold, calculated decision. Something so different. it's totally, totally different. And it's now the time to buy your investment properties because of the interest rate being so low. No, definitely. I'm going to get to the interest rate now as well. For those joining at the moment, thank you so much for joining our session of Kobe Portrait. We're talking property, um, how property sector has been affected. Kobe, um, for those who don't know, um, obviously owns the biggest agency in Nelson Valley Bay, which is Remax Independent, with about 70 odd agents looking after Nelson Valley Bay. For, for those who've got questions for Kobe, please do so and comment in the comment box and tell us what your questions are, and she'll be able to answer those as well. And don't forget, this coming Wednesday, we've got Michelle talking uh, law specifically around COVID-19. And then next week, Wednesday, the 3rd of June, we have Edith Fenter joining us right here at 3 o'clock on the Oracle Media Facebook page. Um, for those joining as well, don't forget, uh, please do share the video while it is live or do like it um, in, uh, so they can get a bit more traction while we are live and more people can interact with us in terms of it. It is open for your comments in the comment section. So we're talking interest rates now, Quibi. Interest rates are really low, and you're seeing car deals um, coming up, and you know where people are saying, "Buy this car; it's only going to cost you this." I've seen of property before. It used to be if you buy for one million, your your re, um, your your loan is normally uh, ten thousand rand. Um, 
now it's a lot lower. So is this the time to buy? And do you need to look at the flexible interest rate or do you need to look at the fixed interest rate? Well, I always am very much in favor of uh, never fixing your interest rate. Okay. Um, uh, uh, reason being, um, whenever you fix your interest rate, they always fix it at least 2% to 1.5% over what the current interest rate is. So, yes. um, and we we don't know whether the interest rates are going to drop even further. I think it is. I think uh, the interest rates are going to drop. I mean, we just dropped another 50% basis points mm -hmm. uh, and they foresee it to drop even further. So um, you almost always read the economy and and um, and speak to to your your banker uh, to give you advice. But at the end of the day, the banks are there to make money out of you. So um, my advice is rather take the difference between um, what your interest rate would have been if you fixed it, put it aside, or pay that capital off against your your uh, pay that money off against your capital and not the interest interest because obviously there's always two components when you take your bond make sure you speak to your bank and make sure that that capital that you put put in goes off against your capital and not the interest they don't always tell you that so make sure you 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 sort that out with your bank am i correct in saying it's about a thousand rand per per million um or, oh, sorry a thousand rand per percentage um if you look at a million rand loan on our um, am I working it up correctly or? I'm yeah, gonna... look, you, you, it's a, a thousand rand. It used to be, and on a ten percent interest rate, it's about a thousand rand for every hundred thousand rand. Yeah. So if you work that out, um, if it's one thousand rand for hundred thousand rand, and we now are paying um, the the new in the latest uh, interest rate or the interest rate current interest rate is seven point two five. Wow. And I just sold a house for 3.5 million rand, and the client's interest rate from the bank came in at 1.8 under prime, which was phenomenal. So their interest rate, I think it's now 5.9. So if you work it out that you're going to pay approximately 590, say six six um 600 rand or 6,000 rand for every 100,000 rand, it's Jeez. really, really good. So, um, and if you buy an investment, uh, um, uh, if you buy a property as an investment, you're going to be renting it out. Your yield is going to be um, phenomenal because your 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 payment on your bond is going to be so much less. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I definitely cannot urge the people enough that if you if you've always wanted to invest in property and get into the um, uh, and start your investment property portfolio, now is the time to do it and. You know, I have um, a one-on-one -on -one, um, and I can help you and, and set it up. We choose the entities that you're buying it in, how you structure it, et cetera, et cetera. So all my REMAX agents that work for me are able to do that. So, um, yeah, I would definitely say it's now the right time to invest in property. Then we also heard that you, you know, couldn't move houses uh, specifically. So if I had sold it now, I, I can't move. How is that going to change going forward? Um, if I've sold my house, when can I move into the new house and when can the um, buyer move into my house? Yeah, that was very challenging. One of our headaches when uh, when we couldn't work because when it was lockdown five, um, only the essential services people could move around. Then when with when it moved to, to level four, which we are in now, the, the clients could, the people that bought houses could move. But we couldn't be there to do the ingoing and the inspections or the the the, the key and overs, and also with rentals, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we got that sorted out. But if you can prove with your offer to purchase and the letter from the attorney that you bought a house and you need to move in, you just get your permit from um, from the police um, station and you could move. So from from level four, people could move. So it's really phenomenal that. Um, you know that that problem has been sorted and we we managed to, to get certificates and to get ourselves registered as essential services um and i must commend um this was all done in in port elizabeth um uh, so uh oh um yeah it was just a miracle how it worked that we could actually get it right to for state agents to do that service and only that service 
the ingoing and of the outgoing in inspection uh, for our tenants as well as um, for houses. Now we are able to to do that because you you need to check whether there are where for instance the stove has been left or the mm -hmm. dish is there. So we we faced massive lawsuits. You know, if we could not be, couldn't be there to do that very important um, yeah. um, element of the sale. Definitely, it's it's you, you had to adjust around it. So if we look at um, the COVID nineteen as well, how has it affected the lending criteria specifically? Um, and you know, if, if you have to look at that. Well, I think um, very importantly, the banks have got a massive ap appetite for uh, two two lane bonds because obviously that's where they get their clients. From there, they can get give the insurances out, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they can build um, uh, their client base. So the banks will always look favorably upon people wanting to to get bonds. It's always challenging if you've got your own business because then you need obviously three years audited financials and the new. When you apply for a bond now, the new 2020 audited financials will be needed for you to do your application. So it is more challenging if you've got your own business to get a bond. But for salary earners, it seems like the people paying the salaries don't get bonds, but the people receiving the same salary, they can get a bond. So unfair. Uh, but yes, uh, so <laughs> you will know, uh, Neil. Yeah. So for people that earn salaries, the banks have got a massive appetite. They are still giving a hundred percent bond up to three million rand. Oh, wow. So, um, so but the one thing that you need to take into consideration when you start looking at a house, I always say to the people, please be prepared. You do your pre-qualification um, with somebody from Better Bond, um, that's our partners um, that that assist us. They're phenomenal people. Um, and it's one person that basically takes care of all your needs. They go to all the different banks. But very importantly, the banks do not give you your cost. And if you have not saved up for your cost, you're not going to get the bond. Because what they do, they actually check whether you are, are um, getting a, a, a personal loan. If you want to get a personal loan for your cost and you want to get the loan, it flags yeah. at the banks and then they will not um, um, grant you your bond. So if well, you are looking... In a specific price bracket, it's important that you speak to your state agent and you ask your state agent to give you all the breakdown of all the costs. So it will transfer you to your bond, your bond fees, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you make sure that is saved up. Mm. Once that is saved up, then you start the process. But um, yeah, you, know, you cannot get um a, a hundred percent plus costs anymore. Maybe someone's also asking here if I applied for um, assistance from the bank on a loan holiday, how would that affect me if I want to sell my house now and buy another house? Do you think that will affect the credit record in any way? It uh, it will. It okay. will. Yeah. So if you have asked for a payment holiday, it is going to affect. So I would say speak to your bank. If you've got a very valid reason and you can. Um, you know, you can speak to your banker and sort that out with them and, and maybe ask them what is the time period that I need to wait. So obviously you will have to pay up all the, the money that you are behind because you remember you will also, if you've got a payment holiday, there will be interest on the interest, which is very high. So don't, um, I would say um, maybe what you will need to do is sell your house, maybe rent for a while, get yeah. your credit scoring up because you don't want your credit scoring to be affected neg negatively because it can have a huge impact on your interest rates that the bank is going to give you. So mm. you want to pay off what you are behind plus the interest as soon as you can and then you can um, apply again. And, and that will be the, the way forward in terms of that specifically. So could be anybody that wants to get a hold of you and ask you any questions for your team of our property, um, how can I get a hold of you? They can just Google Remax Independent Properties and they can choose any of my wonderful agents on there or all our contact details are on there and we can assist you in in all your property needs. Um, and the state agent, if there's anything that you can, that you want to know about, um, you know, how we, we train, what we do, how we do it, you're also welcome to contact me. It's always better to just WhatsApp me 
and then I'll come back to you because we're all always fully booked. So just send the WhatsApp and I'll come back to you as soon as I've got um, a little bit of free time. Uh, awesome. Lindy also saying here, yeah, during the, this time, it's, it's heartening to hear that um, banks still have faith in SS economy, uh, economic future and awarding uh, mortgage bonds. L uh, Lydia also saying, um, explain how exciting trusting to open up the industry um, on uh, Monday and how will it uh, be operating specifically. So that's also a good question. You're obviously opening on level three. Is the adjustments you, you've had to make uh, to be able to operate? Um, uh, thank you for that question, Lydia. Um, it's very important that people understand that the way that we're going to do business in the future is definitely not going to be um, um, uh, business as normal. It's going to be very, very different. We are going to try not to have people coming into the office. The agents are not going to work at the office anymore like we used to. Um, obviously, we had to get all the screens for we can still sign the offers in the the offer to purchase is in the office, all the material, the offer to purchase is in marketing material, all that will be at the office. But we're yep. going to try and and uh, we've actually discussed it this morning. We just had our, our sales meeting at 9 o'clock this morning and we're going to have um, almost like a drive-through, uh, like you have at McDonald's. Yes. Uh, because we need to keep the office sanitized all the time, we're going to have the admin staff at the office, but the agents are going to phone the order in if they need a listing pack, if they need brochures to be printed and binded and everything, they're going to phone it in, we're going to uh, seal it in an envelope, and when they come by, we're just going to, the, the one of the admin ladies will go out and give it whatever they need, they can go and operate. Um, but because we're going to have to keep a register, obviously if one person in the office uh, gets uh, a positive uh, COVID um, uh, um, mm -hmm. outcome on the testing, then the whole office will be have to shut uh, down and everybody that was in contact with that person will then have to uh, go basically into isolation for two, two weeks. So what we're trying to avoid is for our agents not to be able to operate. So what mm. that is why we designed this, and I think all the other companies should do the same, so that you don't expose your agents to to that, that they might have to have another lockdown. We all know that with the current numbers that we're looking at, um, um, it is going to um, escalate um, the number of, of positive COVID cases. And um, we just had a meeting this morning and we had some feedback from uh, Liesl Kravenstein that joined us at our meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that also said that towards the middle to the end of July, there can potentially be another um, lockdown. Oh. Or, so we will basically need to gear ourselves that we're not going to, to cause that to happen. We need to stand yes. together. We need to make sure that we keep our social distancing, that we keep on doing everything that we need to do to safeguard our clients. Um, and that's why for us, we, we we want the agents to be safe. They're dealing with the public. We want to ensure the public that we are taking every single precaution that we can to ensure their safety. Um, and also for our admin staff, um, you know, so try and, lim and um, eliminate or limit any physical um, interaction. So you've completely adapted, you're ready for next week. Um, any listings that come in, that could come into Remax, you can just obviously go to Remax Independent and have a look at that specifically in contact with the agents. Um, before we finish off, and I'm gonna ask Kobe on the last thoughts that you'd like to share with us. Don't forget this coming Wednesday, we're talking to Michelle with regards to law and COVID-19. She's from VZLR Attorneys, one of the biggest attorneys firms in Victoria. Um, and then also next week, Wednesday, either Fenter, right here on the Oracle Media in conversation, the 3rd of June. Don't forget, for next week, we'll only have these sessions every Wednesday. There'll be no Monday or Friday session at all. It'll be every Wednesday, and we've got a great um, list of speakers for you for June as well, every single Wednesday going forward. Um, so, Kobe, just as we finish off, any last thoughts from, um, that you'd like to share from your side? Yes, my, my message to everybody is what's happened to us is terrible. Um, and I, I want to say that it's it's like you've dealt, we are all dealt cards. And we can't change the cards that was dealt to us, but you can change the way that you play it and the way that you react to it. So yes. let's, let's, we can't hug and kiss everyone anymore. 
but let's just give a message of encouraging to people. Let's let's be patient with one another. Let's let's uh, be nice to one another, and uh, let's just make it work because the economy has been affected extremely badly with with COVID. But we need to stand together, and we need to make it better. We need to be there for one another now more than ever. Um, support your people around you. Be there for the people around you. And uh, let's just make the best of, of what the effect of COVID is going forward. And Neil, thank you for your wonderful program and for always getting interesting people to come in and speak to us. You're doing a great job. So thank you and I commend you as well. Anytime. Thanks so much, Kobe. It's also been great to work with the Remax brand from the Oracle Media site over the past few years in terms of um, your marketing and social media on that side. So thanks for giving us that opportunity. Yeah, you are the amazing. He's our marketer, the company that I believe in, the companies that's doing our marketing. So thank you so much for everything you do for us. Anytime, Kobe. Thanks for joining us. I will, uh, for those joining us, I will link to you right here, Wednesday at 3 o'clock with Michelle. Kobe, you must have a good afternoon. Um, and good luck with next week when you open up. Can't wait. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. I will then see you this coming uh, Wednesday with Michelle. Don't forget to give the Fenter next week Wednesday. Please do share the video and do please provide your comment and feedback on how um, and any feedback that you may have about today's session. Uh, thank you so much. I will see you this coming uh, Wednesday right here in Oracle Media in conversation.